give it away? You have a little smoky Joe. It's an old Milwaukee. No, no, no. Weber. Weber oh. Brew. Okay. Odds of winning are extremely high. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> What Your Father Didn't Teach You About Shaving with Mark Harrow, who is the Mantic 59, as you may have seen on YouTube. Uh, we have some really fantastic sponsors for this event, one being uh, on Milwaukee.com, and Tarna helped out a lot with this. Hector and Delaware did all the food. PDR. spend so much money on, on themselves. Instead, you can spend it on yourself. Um, so, and then through on Milwaukee.com, I've had an opportunity to get to know some of you guys, and uh, I, I hope that um, we can continue to advocate and, and push for the cause that is uh, old school shaving and grooming. So, I'm delighted that everyone's here. I will be the guy who kind of goes like this if you just keep talking too long, but I bet you be right on task. Uh, so, but I'd I will like, be the girl that will help you if you need anything. Okay? <laughs> And this is my uh, bowl from home, but that's really all I contributed. But um, thanks again, everyone, for, for coming, and uh, I'll turn it over to Mark. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm I'm a little, uh, for lack of a better word, speechless. I guess. Uh, thank you so much for coming and. Thank you to Stag Barbershop and I'm Milwaukee and the Fister and all the people who uh, have decided to uh, come to hear me talk. Um, I'm quite flattered. Uh, if I sound a little nervous and maybe a little unprepared, it's only because I'm nervous and maybe a little unprepared. <laughs> uh, I did want to also acknowledge uh, the person that got me into all of this. My wife, Galen over there. Without her, uh, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, and luckily, uh, when I want to buy something shaving related, she can't really say anything about it because she's the one that got me into it in the first place. <laughs> so I say, sweetheart, I need this $100 razor. Fine, no problem. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> She's nodding yes. I do kind of want to take a moment to gauge who I'm talking to, whether I'm uh, going to be 
preaching to the choir, if you will. You know, yeah, yeah, they hailed. Or maybe some, some people who aren't quite familiar with the topic at hand. So if, if I might ask, of the people here, is anyone using a, an electric razor? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> fine. Because I have got this mole on my face that if I don't, I usually end up bleeding. So. Okay, all right. Does anybody uh, use something like a, a cartridge razor, like a Mach 3 or a Fusion regularly? Okay, a lot of people, all right. Anybody using uh, canned shaving cream or canned shaving gel? Ooh, a few. Oh, we're going to change your mind. <laughs> Ooh, you're going to hear from me. <laughs> okay. And what kind of troubles have you been having with your shaves? Does anybody get a lot of razor burn? A few, okay. How about nicks and cuts? Ooh, a few more, okay. How many people just don't enjoy your shave? <laughs> I'll help change your mind. <laughs> One of the things that has really changed my life, really, truly, about shaving is the, the real joy that I can get from what normally would be a very mundane operation. Everybody pretty much shaves in the morning or whenever they do. Some hate it so much that they shave maybe once a week or whenever they have to get away with it. And with proper education and learning a proper skill set, you can discover that you won't mind shaving every day. In fact, you may look forward to shaving every day. I know I look forward to shaving every day. Uh, Andy, where are you? Do you, are you look forward to shaving every day? Uh, the, 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 the people that have really gotten into this has almost made it a hobby. It's not necessarily an expensive hobby even. You can do this very inexpensively. And in fact, if you're using a, say, a Fusion right now, you're probably paying on the order of maybe $3 or so per cartridge. If I can get you interested in single blade shaving with a DE blade, they run less than 50 cents. Do the math. In fact, in bulk, you can get them for like under 20 cents. And usually the re your return on investment will happen in under a year. So there are multiple levels of, of shaving desires and outcomes here. But I'll be going through initially uh, sort of the techniques and concepts that apply to shaving with whatever uh, shaving system or paraphernalia you use and then we'll take a pause and uh, we'll talk about uh, haircuts with Jess and then I'll come back and I'll actually demonstrate a, uh, a razor shave with traditional lather with a single blade razor just how uh, quick comfortable and close it can be and maybe get you thinking about uh, trying a lot of this stuff yourself so let's kind of talk about some of the tools of the trade. And the first being the razor uh, that you, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, uh, most of them have at least two uh, blades in them, some three, some four, five, six, whatever they're up to now. And they all work on a principle called, supposedly called, hysteresis. Now for the uh, engineering inclined of you, you know hysteresis is actually a term related to magnetism. Well somehow in the shaving world, it attached itself to the term of the concept of one blade pulling a bit of hair out and the next blade cutting it off. Uh, originally this was like the Atra stuff with, with two blades and then they decided to go further with the Mach 3 and then four blades and then five blades. And really and truly those systems can work for a lot of people even though it's expensive, and, but for many other people it can cause skin problems as well. I mean, it's working for a lot of people because they're still selling them. So, there are those razors and, and blade cartridges. There's also a, an important part of that system, which is the pivot system, which is actually, in my view, the real reason people get better shaves with some of these multi-blade cartridges is not necessarily the blades themselves, but rather the pivot system that helps glide it over 
uh, terrain of your, of your face. But with a little skill, you can compensate for that and do it on your own. Particularly with a single blade razor, either a, uh, a DE double edged razor or uh, if you may think of some of the older generation shit injectors maybe, or even a straight razor, they all can do the same or better work as long as you apply some techniques and apply some concepts and have a little skill about it, you can get an equal or better shave with a single blade than you can with a multi-blade razor. Another really important piece of gear for the traditional shaver is the shaving brush. The shaving brush hydrates the shaving cream or soap, it mixes very well and it helps apply it to the, uh, to the face where each individual little bit of hair uh, on the face gets nice and surrounded by lather, which may not necessarily happen if you're using a squeeze tube or particularly a canned uh, product. I should mention that if you're using a canned product, all of the things being equal, you are shaving with the worst possible product. <laughs> And let me explain why. The, the, the product itself may give you a decent shave, an acceptable shave, but just think about this. The propellants that are used in the can na will naturally dry out your skin. They'll create little pockets of air within the product. And the, the real heavy work, the heavy lifting, if you will, in shaving is done by water. So if you've prepared your face with water and then applied a foam, you're starting to displace that water already. So you're not really helping yourself. Then the manufacturer of the canned product will add additional ingredients to try and make up for the lack of lubrication from the, from the lack of water. And all those products are typically petroleum based. So, once again, you are displacing water even more. So you are putting something on your face that is a substitute for a substitute, and the more ingredients are touching your face, the more opportunities your face has of not agreeing with one of those ingredients. So if you happen to use a, a product and your face is red afterward, guess what? You're probably allergic or at least sensitive to one of those ingredients. Uh, a traditional shave cream or soap has far fewer ingredients, far more natural ingredients. You do have to work a little at it in that you have to generate your own lather, but even that doesn't take too awful long, and I'll show you that later. So bear in mind that even coming away from this today, even if you decide that you don't want to go the brush and cream route, at least get a product, a shaving cream or a shaving gel from a from a squeeze tube instead of a pressurized can. Just that will help. Hello. If it's my broker, tell himself. <laughs> I'd also like to talk a little about some of the techniques of shaving that you may not be aware of. Again, I like to think of shaving as a skill. It's, it's a simple skill. It's not that difficult. Uh, some people take longer to pick up uh, than others, but that's like swimming or playing a musical instrument or riding a bike for that matter. Some people pick it up quicker than others. In my own case, I admit, it took me a while to really pick all this stuff up. In fact, part of the reason I started doing my videos is because I wanted to try and help other people get past the issues I had for a long time. And I hope I've been at least partially successful with that. But amongst those, com those concepts I'd like to talk about, the first is knowing your face, getting to know your face, getting to know the, the growth patterns of your hair, uh, typically called the grain. There are areas of your face that may grow hair in one direction and other areas of your face that may grow in another direction. And understanding that pattern is pretty important, again, particularly if you're using a multi-blade cartridge. And I'll get into the reasons a little later during my, my shave, but basically it's really important at first to follow the grain of that hair, follow the pattern. 
And an easy way to do that is just let your hair grow out for a couple days, look at yourself in the mirror, give yourself a good critical look. You may want to use your hand in circular motions, go over your, your beard like this in one direction, it'll feel more rough, and in the opposite direction, it may feel less rough. So again, you, you need to discover sort of like a, a golfer going to a new golf course, what the course is like. And if you need a little help with that, uh, small plug, on sharpologist.com, uh, at the bottom of the page, I do have some shaving resources, including three different facial maps that you can download and print that you can use to, uh, to sketch out your own beard grain pattern. And at least initially, uh, when you start shaving traditionally, or, or at least up, trying to upgrade your shave a little bit, uh, that can be very useful. Along with knowing the grain of your face, you'd also want to look at the facets, if you will, of your face. Think of your face like a diamond. What are the flat parts and what are the curved parts? Ideally, you want to shave in a fashion that you are doing mostly flat segments shaving and trying not to go around corners. Uh, obviously, carpet razors with pivots make that easier, but you will find you will still get a better shave if you follow the flat segments of your face. Typically, for me, for example, there's a segment from the upper cheek to the lower cheek, another segment from the lower cheek to the jaw, then from the jaw down to the mid neck here and then down, and get in different parts. You want to be aware of those and use that knowledge to shave those parts in specific orders. Another important, maybe the most important concept, uh, particularly for people who are not really familiar with, with uh, high-end shaving or uh, didn't learn a whole lot about shaving, is the, the, the idea of beard reduction in that you don't want to try and shave off all your stubble all at once. A lot of people will just grab a can of something, slap on some foam, take their razor and go against the grain thinking that it'll be uh, the quickest, easiest way to get the smoothest uh, skin afterward. Nothing could be further than the truth, honestly. You would get much more damage to your face with razor burn and, and the, particularly the possibility of ingrown hairs that way. What you want to think of is reducing the, the, the stubble in stages the most comfortable way possible, which is usually shaving with the grain at first, then going back and shaving across the grain at 90 degree angles, then maybe across the grain again at, from the other angle, from 80, 180 degrees beyond that, even before you even try a against the grain pass. And some people just can't do against the grain. It does happen. But by the same token, a lot of people who think they have sensitive skin right now really don't. They have average, normal skin. It's just they don't use the correct technique and skill to, uh, to do it properly. Another concept that is particularly important is the idea of pressure. You want to use as little pressure on the blade as possible to do that shave. I know you see on TV the male models, they'll take a razor and gouge in like this and say, wow, you know, I got a nice clean track. But shaving with pressure will bend or, or bow the skin away from those flat points I was talking about earlier. So again, even though there are some cartridge razors with a pivot that will bend back and partly compensate for uh, too much pressure, it only goes up to a certain point. Your best way is to use as absolutely little pressure on the skin as possible. If you've got a multi-blade cartridge, one easy way to do this is to simply hold it by the bottom of the razor. Just hold it at the tip, at the bottom. This forces you to use a very light pressure. And you will find, in m many, many cases, you will get a better shave just by doing that. Because again, the shave area that you're shaving is flatter. 
And in fact, if you remember the Fusion commercials, they make a big deal out of the Fusion cartridge engineering that uh, smooths out the bumpiness of the other blades. Well, if you don't use the pressure, you don't need that anyway. So why spend $3? Another issue that's important to think about is the blade itself. Even if you use a multi-blade razor, there are certain brands of blades that are more friendly to your face, your individual face, than other brands. Uh, Gillette and, and a lot of the other companies, they engineer it very carefully to be useful for the average guy. Well, how many average guys are here right now? None of you are average, as far as they're concerned. So, it pays to check out different brands of blades if you can. Now, if you're stuck in, say, a Fusion where there aren't any other brands except Gillette, you're stuck. But if you have another uh, blade, pardon me, another razor where you can get different brands of blades, it really would help you to try a different brand to see what happens. I think you'll find that even in the cartridge world you can get a better shave uh, just by trying out different different styles because they're made to slightly different specifications. Single blade DE razors come from in a huge variety of, of blade manufacturing tolerances, coatings, um, styles. I mean, they're all made engineering wise to, say, to look the same physically but under the hood that many, many are very different from each other. So if you're using a single blade razor or, or want to learn with a single blade razor, one of the things you should really do is to try a variety of different blades and you will very soon discover some give you much better shaves and others give you not very good shaves at all, even though you might be using the same razor, the same techniques, the same lather in all other respects. Along with the cartridge, I guess I should also mention that those cartridges, depending on the manufacturer, those blades are set to a specific angle. Uh, cartridge A might be set to a particular angle and cartridge B might be set to another uh, angle. And that in itself could be trouble for you. For example, uh, a few years ago, the four-bladed uh, Schick product, uh, 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 but it had four blades in it. It was notoriously uh, difficult for people to use because it, it was very, had a very aggressive razor angle on it and gave a lot of people uh, terrible razor burn. That same concept in a DE razor uh, is actually something that you can use to your advantage. You can manipulate the angle of the razor with a DE pardon me, the angle of the blade with a DE razor and use, be gentle in some parts that you need to be gentle on and less gentle in other parts that can take it. So that can be very useful indeed. Uh, also useful, uh, particularly for the DE user, but also for a cartridge user as well, is to simply lock the wrist while you're uh, shaving. Uh, that in itself prevents an arcing motion and gives you a more consistent line as you're shaving. Again, particularly important for a DE shaver. Uh, the cartridge pivots can partly compensate again for, for that kind of thing, but again, uh, you don't want to depend on the cartridge too much. Give yourself a nice lock wrist, do these things very carefully, and you'll find yourself, yourself get a, a better shave. There are some also some advanced techniques that you can use while shaving. Uh, particularly at the end of the shave to catch those little teeny bits of, uh, of stubble that might be left over and I'll be demonstrating those uh, a little later. Um, post shave, uh, you want, want to try and use a product that takes care of your skin. You've just kind of uh, removed the very top layer of skin in a way so you want to be careful of uh, how you treat it. Uh, in, in my particular opinion, aftershaves with high alcohol content uh, is, is not your friend. Even though you may like the sting, uh, your skin is telling you uh, it doesn't like it for a reason. Uh, over a long period of time, uh, 
this can affect your skin quite a bit. If you happen to be in a very humid area, a very hot area, or you have very oily skin, yeah, a little, a little alcohol is going to be okay. Uh, along the same lines of maybe the amount of alcohol that's in witch hazel, which is maybe 13%. But anything beyond that is, is really unnecessary, in my opinion. And then from post-shave to pre-shave, let's talk a little bit about the beginning of the shave. Uh, you want to definitely keep your face wet and warm uh, to prepare the stubble to be shaved. If you heat and wet your face, for example, for a good three minutes, that will saturate the skin. It will actually ease the, the hair follicle, probably the hair, slightly out of its follicle. Uh, it'll make the hair about 25% more pliable, and it will become easier to cut, uh, particularly versus against the, 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 the yank and hack multi-blade system. This way you get the same kind of effect, but it's much more natural and as you finish the shave and everything retracts to normal, it retracts very slowly, it gets back to a kind of a, a normality that uh, is, is suitable rather than trying to rush things back. Um, I do also want to finish by mentioning product availability. A lot of people when they first get into particularly uh, non-mass market shaving have trouble finding products. Uh, there are various uh, ways of, of getting products, even locally, at very different price points. For example, you can right now probably go to Walgreens or CVS and get yourself a boar brush, which is what we call it a natural hair brush, and uh, for eight dollars, and a couple dollars more for a puck of soap, and go to town. You probably won't be particularly successful at it, but it's a way to start cheap, kind of challenge yourself to see if this is really something for you. Then you can go up the scale from there. Obviously, uh, some of the uh, larger malls uh, may have like a body shop or Crabtree and Evelyn. Each of those have uh, some uh, shaving materials that are actually pretty good. And then up the scale a little more are places like the Brass Rooster, which carry higher end products and higher performing products as well. Let me just go back very quickly. I'll talk about it a little more on my demonstration, but there are several different types of brushes uh, for using uh, on, on traditional lather. The, the least expensive and usually the least, the least quality is called a bore, made by a bore here, um, sometimes called natural bristle. There are some very good bore brushes out there, it's just that they're not in mass market areas. You can also get synthetic brushes if you are a person of that style. And then the typical normal brush for shaving is usually made out of badger hair. And there are different grades of badger hair as well. And I'll get into that a little later. But at least I wanted to give you a sense of some of the tools that are necessary, a sense of some of the techniques that you can apply with almost any kind of product and get yourself a better shave, and then from there, upgrade your shave even more to have something more pleasant and maybe something to look forward to instead of something that you cringe every week to get over with. So with that, I will stop for now, give us a break, and we'll have Jess do her thing. I'm gonna be a few minutes, grab a beer.